am Matteo, and uh, as you might have noticed, I am uh, a solution architect. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a journey. And it's a journey about solution, solution that uh, I designed the last few years uh, to improve our uh, DevOps chain. But uh, as, you as you know, all solutions start from a problem. And this is where I introduce my colleague, Simone. Hi everyone, I am Simone and uh, I am a problem architect. So I like to raise problems. Well, making this journey with Matteo in the last few years has been uh, quite an adventure, I would say. And um, yeah, we are here today because we would like to share this adventure with you. But uh, let's start from the very beginning. So let's roll back in time. Let's go to just a few years ago. We were not DevOps butterflies. Uh, we were a really small team. Our workflow was really bare bones. So we had like an issue board. We mostly organized our work there. We split it in tasks. And then unrelated, we had a subversion repository. We will check out the code from the repository, all the development and the testing was done locally on our own machines. We will just take care of regularly, uh, you know, deploying the artifacts that, that we were producing to a QA environment which consisted of uh, multiple virtual machines. And that was it. And uh, on the other side, completely separate from us, there was this operations team that will pull the packages that we published and manually take care of deploying and making releases to the production environment of our customer. And you know, this workflow was really problematic for us because there were multiple teams involved and uh, where there are multiple teams, there are communication issues, everything was manual, mistakes were bound to happen. And in fact, they happened, they happened a lot. There were a lot of uh, integration mistakes, uh, last minute bug fixes, and uh, all of these impacted our workflow because uh, we had subversion, okay, and uh, we had these release cycles. What we did was, uh, okay, we know that we will have trouble during the release, we have to organize ourselves, we split the team in two parts, one part will work on a next development branch on new features because, you know, <laughs> for the customer, new features can never really stop. The other part of the team will stay on the main development branch, which in subversion is called the trunk, and uh, just keep committing uh, these bug fixes. And at some point, hopefully, we will be able to merge the two. The problem is that this feedback loop lasted like uh, several months at some point. And uh, when we finally had to merge, we had a lot of problems. Merges in subversion are never easy by themselves, but in, in those months, the code base changed so much that sometimes it was really hard to make these merges. It would take us multiple days, uh, and uh, we introduced even more regression making the merges. Sometimes we even lost features by mistake. So we knew that this could not really continue and we would not be able to succeed and scale with this approach. And that's where I knocked on Matteo's door. I, I didn't really knock because, you know, it was in the desk next to me, so <laughs> I didn't have to knock. But I, I told him, okay, we need to find something better. We need to evolve. What can we do about this? Well, we know that we have to evolve, but how? What were our necessities? We have uh, a source control tool that uh, does not uh, work very well and uh, we have uh, a bad workflow. For this reason, we choose uh, to migrate to Git uh, and adopt a branching strategies to reduce the mistakes and improve the release and, and feedback, feedback loop. I evaluate different solution, and in the end, uh, for several reasons, uh, I choose GitLab because, uh, first of all, it's free, and uh, we can install uh, on our server Continuous integration and continuous delivery are built in to GitLab, and it provides uh, collaborative tools for collaborative coding. And now that we have uh, GitLab in our toolchain, we start uh, to evolve the status quo. Phase one, we want to choose uh, our branching strategies. And we choose uh, GitFlow because uh, 
it's the most famous and uh, it has uh, a command line that uh, could help the developer transition to the new tool. And now that we had the new tools to organize, to organize our daily job, and uh, we could discuss the issue on uh, the project board, it is a reference, uh, the commits, uh, the issue in commit message, we could not notify via Slack uh, when uh, someone pushes comments or something important happen on a Git uh, repository. We also automated the publish flow and with uh, GitHub Runner and CI script that are versioned in with the project base. And uh, we installed on the QI server a cron script to pull the new version of Docker image from the Docker registry. And with this, I think I solve all your problems. Simone, right? Um, well, I have to admit it's a nice improvement on our initial situation, very well done, but we almost immediately face some limitations. In fact, okay, you have a, a, pull, uh, a pull cron job and it regularly updates our environment, but it's still very far to a real, true, continuous delivery. So it's not always aligned with our developments. And also having these virtual machines costs us a lot of time to maintain them, to duplicate the environments, to create new ones. All the times we spend there, it's time that we cannot spend improving our process, our methodology. So yeah, we have feature branches. We are more organized than before, but we are not making any code reviews. We are not making any merge I got requests. It, I got so it. Uh, we have to evolve uh, again. And I think we can solve most of the technical limitation by evolving our infrastructure. We can uh, install Kubernetes cluster managed by Rancher and move uh, all our tools and application uh, on this cluster. And with this uh, infrastructure solution, uh, we can implement a full continuous delivery. And now that we have this uh, I Kubernetes cluster, we also can install uh, uh, SonarCube for software quality and uh, menus to speed up, as a cache layer, to speed up our pipeline. And the, the immediate advantage of this uh, solution are that uh, we, we can create a new environment very quickly and with low effort. And during this second phase, we also version uh, our environment setup in uh, a Git repository. And now that we have resolved all our previous problem, we can we could focus uh, on uh, merge request and code review. I think that's all. Well, okay. Um, let's say that we improved also the methodology. We automate more. We are able to work better. We are able to iterate faster. We get more customers, and that is really nice. But uh, we start facing uh, new problems now that we have new customers. We start. We, we start facing some challenges with scaling and growing as a company because uh, now there are some customers that uh, start using our software and uh, maybe they don't always use the same version of the software. So some customer for some reason stays behind. And this is where the branching strategy which was fell, falls apart because you know Gitflow is really nice, it's really structured but it does not cover all use cases Specifically, in this case, it does not envision a way to keep supporting multiple versions of the same software. So, we have uh, uh, our software that, that is at the 2.0 version. A customer is stayed on the 1.0 version, asks us for a bug fix mm -hmm. because we are supporting that version. We can open an hotfix branch and make the bug fix, but then it's unclear how to merge the bug fix to the main development branch. Maybe because that code does not exist anymore in the latest version. And even if we can merge it, it's unclear how to increase the version number. So there is something wrong there. Mm. We, we need to open, we, we need to keep the hotfix branch open forever, but that's definitely not ideal. And also, wherever we are making a release, there are a lot of manual steps that we have to make. We have to open branches, make manual changes to change our files, uh, version numbers, remember to merge the branches, push, push the tags, which we regularly forget, and we mess up the releases. So we need to find a way to make the release process less involved and scale for different versions. 
how do we do that? Yeah, you are telling me that uh, the branch strategies that uh, we, we chose uh, does not fit very well uh, with uh, our needs. But it's not a real problem. We, we can change the branching, st the branching strategy and uh, we adopt uh, the GitHub flow that has two variants. The first one is called uh, environment branches and uh, in this variant we have uh, the master branch uh, and uh, one branch for each environment. And for example, when we merge from master to staging branch, uh, uh, the CI pipelines uh, update the QA environment. The advantages uh, of this uh, approach are that uh, we release our software with a single command and we do not tag uh, our release commits because the branches uh, reflect uh, the history and the status uh, of the environment. Okay, that's a nice improvement, but what about the releases? Yeah, for projects that need to support multiple re releases, uh, we can adopt uh, the release branches with the GitHub flow. And in this strategy, we have one branch for each supported version. When we fix a bug, we open a branch from master, fix the bug, merge the, the fix on master, and then cherry pick the commit from master to, to the release branch. Okay. And uh, in the both variants, uh, the feature branches still exist. And with this branch strategy, I'll solve uh, all our problems. Well, maybe you solved my problems, but you didn't solve uh, the problems of the other 20 other guys. Who? Well, Matteo, you know, while we were busy solving all these problems and finding these solutions, the company has grown. We are not three guys in a room anymore, but there are a lot of people that work for our company and they're split across multiple teams. And they're facing problems too because, you know, we are consultants, we work with uh, a lot of tech stacks, and we are split across a lot of projects, okay? We care about having a CI pipeline for all of them, but, you know, how, how do we maintain these pipelines? So, yes, we succeeded in establishing a common set of stages and jobs that all our pipelines have to define, okay? So, we know that all our software has to all our software pipelines have to install the dependencies, link the code, run the unit tests, the end-to-end -end tests, some quality checks, then build, publish, deploy, usual stuff. In practice, then, uh, the pipelines for different tech stacks are implemented in different ways. And this is an issue because it's a lot of burden on the developers. And uh, also, even when two projects even use the same tech stacks, there are inconsistencies across the two pipelines sometimes because someone may, maybe implements a job in a different way from another. And when I find a bug on a CI pipeline, I have to go back on all the others and fix the bug. So all the time that we were spending earlier on manually deploying and publishing all our packages are now spent maintaining these pipelines. So I think we need to solve that and go back to actually developing you know, the features yeah, you're right, but this is a common problem for a developer. We have uh, duplicate code in different repository, and to solve this problem, we can move uh, all this CI script in a single centralized repository, and with uh, all script in this repo, we can define uh, a usab reusable and uh, uh, templates organized by technology and stages, uh, and in this way, we can import uh, the right template in our CI script uh, and customize them if needed. The project CI script uh, are now simple and easy to maintain since most of the time we upgrade uh, in the uh, base CI script uh, and all projects exploit all project exploit them for free. For example, all projects that are deploying Kubernetes could import and extend the template job, the template job that you can see on the left. Uh, and in the extended job on the right uh, is enough to set a few variables to get a working uh, deploy job without uh, any knowledge of Kubernetes. And in some cases, is uh, enough to get, is in, uh, in some cases, importing a template is enough to get a working job. We try to keep uh, this script as readable as possible. And to do that, we define some uh, high-level function so I 
Uh, as you can see, I can go through the comments and easily understand what is happening. So in this case, uh, I this job template, upgrade the project version, install the dependency, persistent environment URL, and deploy, finally deploy the project on Kubernetes cluster. But to do that, we define bash function that hide the complexity of the command. This is not uh, an idea, but uh, we, I came up uh, with this idea by reading the GitLab uh, how to develop source code. Now that we have this uh, CI script, uh, this CI script are, are very useful for, uh, for us. And uh, another example is, is when uh, in the last year we developed a React Native application and uh, React Native application had the three technology st stack, the node stack and the two native stacks and we could reuse uh, all the node uh, CI script uh, and uh, implemented only the two native uh, CI, CI scripts for the native parts. But another problem is uh, that uh, all our GitLab runner are, depl are deployed on Kubernetes and it is impossible to build an IaaS application without a Mac operating system. To solve this issue, again, is enough to install a GitHub runner on a Mac server. And with that, uh, I think uh, that our evolution is complete. Well, I admit that, uh, okay, we solved all our problems, very good. We improved a lot in the last few years. But I, I think that if there is something that we really learned is that we are never really done with this journey, okay? So the, the mindset that we acquired is that there is always some part of our workflow and how we make things that can be improved or made easier or just automated so that we can focus our effort on more important stuff. And in fact, this is what we are doing still today. So just for once, I'm a, the problem architect, but just for once, I'll present a solution. So <laughs> this is something that we did uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, so automated releases, GitLab gives you the possibility to publish releases for your software. So you get this nice change log with the, the links to the artifacts and it's very cool. We wanted to automate making the releases when we publish to the environment branches, for example. So what we did was just uh, creating a change log bot, which uh, pulls the relevant part of the change log uh, depending on the version we are releasing and uh, invokes the GitLab API to create the new release. And this is all very cool because it's another part that we do not have to think about. So yeah, I, I think the, this is the really important thing. So just to wrap up, some takeaways. What we learned, we learned that uh, how the company grows impacts not only how we organized and our methodology, but also which technological solutions wor work well or not, or don't work well for us. The important thing is that uh, whenever we find that something is not working anymore, we are not afraid to try alternatives, find something better as for the branching strategy. What was really nice for us looking back is that uh, GitLab supported us from the very first phase of our evolution and uh, worked very well for every problem we threw at it. So there was nothing we we're not able to do with GitLab, and we are thankful for this. And also, we drew a lot of inspiration both from the GitLab blog and the GitLab source code itself. So yeah, I'd say that uh, we made the right choice. Uh, so yeah, just to finish, a few words about ourselves. We already presented ourselves. I'm Simone, he's Matteo. Uh, maybe we may be the, the solution and problem architect at WellD, which is the company we work for. It's located in Lugano, in the south of Switzerland. It's a beautiful city, by the way. Uh, you know, there are not only architects in a company, there are also a lot of developers that put a lot of effort in, uh, you know, actually adopting all the solutions that we think about. So we just wanted to have this slide to share some moments that we have with them, which we think are really nice and funny and thank also them. It's also thanks to them if we are here today. If you want to know more about us, just find us later in the crowd. There is also the CEO somewhere there, so you can ask whatever you want. <laughs> so yeah, now we're really done. 
so long and thanks thank for you, the thanks fish. for all the fish. So I want to thank both Simone and Matteo. Like, this is the journey that we're all on. Uh, the way you guys represented this is perfect. I'd encourage you, if you guys are not doing this in your company, think of it as a problem solution, right? Challenge one another, go through that evolution. This is a culture question. So, you know, they've done an amazing job implementing and using a tool that happens to be GitLab. That process is the one that we want you to walk away with. That culture is a part that we want to be a part of, if at all possible. We're honored that we were able to help you guys through this. We're also just honored you guys are here to share that. So with that, we have a couple minutes. Wanted to open up if anyone has any questions. I've got the mic, but if you can learn from anyone, I think they've been on a journey that would be well worth it if you have questions. If you have, ah, perfect. Hi. Hi. So um, obviously, me being here, I totally am with you. Like all of this sort of stuff, changing the mindset, making sure that you're constantly asking questions. Good. Totally with you. It's very hard to convince people who aren't in that mindset to get in that mindset though. Um, what sort of, how do you, aside from bluntly telling them to get their ass in gear, um, what sort of the way that you found to be able to engage with people and actually get them to think about, yeah, we should probably be improving? Uh, you, you made the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think that, um, I will answer. I, I think that on, on one side we are very lucky, okay, because um, all our company employees uh, are very young, okay, and enthusiast about software. So whenever a new solution is proposed that uh, promises to improve their workflow, improve you know, uh, the, the results then they can obtain from their effort, they are always quite uh, on board with it. So I think that's the key thing. And uh, then there is the other side, okay, so which is the customer, because of course we are uh, consultants, so sometimes we always have to, we, we also have to convince customers. That's harder because maybe they are less prone to, you know, change their tools or change uh, the way they organize their workflow. And, you know, uh, sometimes it has taken also several years to convince them to make the switch. But if you show that there are uh, objective, uh, you know, improvements, then usually people get convinced then and, and try new things. That's, I think, the key. It's so just showing them, not asking you to trust you, not asking, yes, not asking them to trust you because, you know, that's a, a leap of faith, but yeah, if you just, sh if you can show the numbers, then it yeah. becomes obvious what to do. So in a way, it's like, we're going to go ahead without you anyway. As soon as you realize it's the best way forward, you're going to yes, be on board. Yes, uh, we are lucky because we have, we have a lot of customers, so uh, some jump on board earlier, some later, but you can, you can show across one another, okay, look what we did for this other customer, it worked very well, this is the tools we are using, this is what we are achieving, this is the speed at which we are releasing, it's working, so maybe try this as well, and board, yeah. yeah, so. Sweet, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, firstly, thank you. I thought that was very well presented, especially as English isn't your <laughs> native language. Go ahead. What has been the biggest blocker through this whole process? What's been the biggest challenge? Um, well, uh, probably putting up with all the required work uh, to switch the, the tooling. So the work we did on the infrastructure part, the Kubernetes part was the was really demanding, you know, we, <laughs> we did it voluntarily, of course, but sometimes we even spent, uh, you know, holidays tinkering around and ducking and trying stuff on, uh, with Kubernetes and uh, deployments, and so th that was the really demanding part. Once it's set up, then it's, uh, it's more graceful for developers to adopt the tools and, and just use them as tools. But setting that all up is very demanding if you, if you don't, if you do not go to a cloud provider, we don't yet. We have our own uh, on machines on premise. So you, you have to manage the whole stack and uh, 
for, for a small company, it's quite an investment. So that I would say was the most important. And that's why we work with a ton of different people because that is the biggest, the Kubernetes piece, it's amazing, but it is a non-trivial adoption piece to a cloud native journey. Yep. And there's other ways to do it. The fact that these guys did that, so their journey, most people skip over that and like, I'll go to a managed service. I will say bravo and learning that because you're gonna know how that operates and knowing the guts of how that works, really, really critical. So if you're looking to do it, be willing if you're a leader, be willing to set aside that time for your team to learn it. Uh, it's certainly well worth it. Uh, and the trade-offs, totally wonderful on this journey, but that may be the biggest piece and that's pretty consistent when we talk to customers. It's not the GitLab and the CICD piece, it's definitely how do you run your operations, the Kubernetes piece. Yeah. Other questions? Hi, thank you. Uh, so maybe just a quick question on this part on Kubernetes. So you almost started from scratch in knowledge on, on Kubernetes maybe years ago. Uh, I imagine my, I have a team, I'm sharing a team, some are, uh, they have knowledge on Kubernetes, some don't. How do you, how do you think that these people with no knowledge of Kubernetes should start or what's the hint for really get into it quite quickly or efficiently? Um, well, disclaimer, not everybody, not all the developers that work with us know Kubernetes, okay? Uh, for us, the important thing is that uh, a lot of them don't have to, okay? So it's not necessary that they understand everything that is going on on Kubernetes. So uh, we do a lot of knowledge sharing to make sure that they understand the, the principles behind Cloud Native, what is Kubernetes, uh, how it works on, uh, you know, an high level of abstraction. But then there are, uh, you know, some responsible people that uh, actually get their hands dirty and work on the uh, deployment scripts and define the services, the ingresses and so on. So it's uh, like a, a, a pyramid of knowledge, but I think it's fine. Then people can decide where they want to stay. You know, if you want to stay at the top and you know, just uh, know everything and put the hands in, in the infrastructure code or they just want to be users of the, of the infrastructure and uh, just reuse the templates we defined, uh, uh, set up a few variables and that's it. That's why it's working for us, it's scaling because we don't have to teach everybody uh, all the, the, you know, the, the concepts behind Kubernetes which are quite a lot and it takes a lot of time to, to get started and, and productive.